Hello everybody, this is CJ with Gamers Paradise. <clears throat> I apologize about any voice issues. Uh, pollen, of course, is a thing in this early time of year, although it's not supposed to be here in Virginia. Anyway, and I apologize about any rustling of paper uh, reading off of the script. So today we are looking at the plastic uh, miniatures that come with the new Battletech box sets. The beginner box comes with a... Griffin, and it also comes with a Wolverine, and it comes in at about $20 uh, retail for the box set, which means these cost you, these two here cost you about $10 a miniature. Um, the other box set which we will go ahead and cover here it comes with the I'll start with the Wolverine it's a game of armored combat box set uh, comes with the Wolverine a Shadowhawk which is this one right here set him in the back um, let's see Wolverine Shadowhawk Commando which there he is. Sorry about the refocusing time. Thunderbolt. Choose that guy right there. It'll focus. There we go. Locust. Right there. Awesome. Just put right here in front of those guys. Catapult. Right there. And finally, the Battlemaster. Alright, so the Game of Armor Combat Box retails for about $60, giving you an average of $8 per miniature here. All of these are very high quality. Um, overall, the quality of the models is very good. So they do have some mold lines, which you will need to use a razor to remove. Don't try to sand them off. It'll just kind of muck things up. Um, you want to go ahead and use a sharp razor. Of course, when you're doing this, be careful not to damage yourself or the miniature. Um, because it is a danger that does come with the, the territory of using razor blades, obviously. All the models are made of a... <clears throat> excuse me, of a PCV style plastic or PVC style plastic. Um, the plastic itself is pretty good quality. I'm going to go ahead and remove most of these here. So, I'm removing the ones that didn't get re-sculpted because they're not on scenes. Um, Alright, so the quality of the plastic is pretty good. You can see here, he has straight gun, gun barrels and everything. I left his as is. It is a slight warp to the gun barrel. Um, the gun barrels can be straightened out if you do have a bent gun barrel by simply dipping the miniature in hot water, straightening the, the barrel out, and letting it cool. Um, yeah, and usually, usually he's going to be your culprit here, the Shadow Hawk. So you know that's that's going to be your main culprit usually. And like I said, you can usually dip them to. Uh, Dip them to go ahead and get rid of that issue. So, all okay. So all the models have been visually updated. Um, the three of them, which were visually updated for the simple fact that they, uh, you know, aesthetic for aesthetic pleasingness was, or I don't know how to put it. I apologize. Um, for aesthetic purposes, were the awesome commando and catapult. Um, the ones that you see here, these five, were re-sculpted and redesigned because of their status. And I'm sorry about all my hands being in here. Let me get this. There we go. Because of their status as unseen mechs, which is a long story, and I'll eventually do a video on that. Um, but these ones here needed to be re-sculpted because of the fact that there's some history concerning their copyright issues as far as the visuals, on what they originally looked like back in the 1980s. Um, we went through a phase of Project Phoenix, 
And then we got these, which are resculpted. They're resculpted to be different enough from the original, the original miniatures, while also retaining their spirit, which a lot of the Project Phoenix stuff had some issues with. Um, Let's see. Otherwise, the mechs do come mounted on full-size hex bases, so they are suitable for both Battletech and Alpha Strike straight out of the box. Um, as far as painting these models, they do take paint well. Um, I did use a surface primer um, from Vallejo. I, I do I use airbrush for uh, most of my base work and stuff like that. Um, I use so I used a surface primer from Vallejo. I haven't had any issues with it sticking. Um, with the paint work, once I had it, even before I had it sealed, I didn't have any issues with rub off or chipping or anything like that. And of course, once it, you know, once they're finished and sealed, they're pretty solid. So I also wanted to go ahead and go over. Oh, what am I grab? That's what I'm trying to grab. I'm trying to give a look. It's not a little marker for my my screen ends here. All right, so I also did want to go ahead and go over. Why didn't he want to focus? Probably because of that shiny cockpit. And we'll get into that in a minute, actually, here. Because that, that's, uh, we'll go over how these are painted here in just a second. Um, so these miniatures here were painted in the colors of the, he does not seem to be focused. I don't know, maybe I'm just, eh, there we go, it looks better. Um, they're painted in the colors of the Republic of the Spear, Republic Standing Guard. Um, so I want to go ahead, go ahead and go over what I used. Uh, first off, we used Vallejo Surface Primer 73602 Black. After that, um, you also need the, all I used, Vallejo Surface Primer White 73600. Um, I, co I covered the whole miniature in black and then performed a zenithal highlight in the white so that way it has pre-shading to it. Um, once we went ahead and did that, we covered the entire model in Vallejo Model Air 71043, that is U.S. Olive Drab. Once it's been covered in U.S. Olive Drab, you hit it again from about a 45 degree angle with Vallejo 71137, which is U.S. Light Green. Um, once we have that done, we go ahead and we paint all the details. So, and I apologize if you hear my cat in the background. She's in heat. So, um, give me a second. All right, had to go spritz her with a little water. Let's make sure he's still in focus because that, yeah, it looks good enough. It looks a little out of focus to me, but I think it's because of the cockpit glare. Okay, so where were we? Oh, yes. So after hitting it with the U.S. light green, um, you go ahead and pick out any of the places where you want it to be red, which, you know, obviously there's more than just where we have. Um, and for that, I used P3 uh, Scorn Red. All right. And then you go ahead and any of the gun barrels, hands, whatever you want to do is metallic. You use Vallejo 71.072, which is gunmetal, fitting enough. And um, finally, you go ahead and you wash the entire miniature heavily, mind you, because these have very deep recesses and they take this very well with a good wash of Citadel Shade Null Oil. All right, so once you have the model washed and, and everything, you let it dry. Go ahead and highlight any of the, like the tops of the gun barrel, stuff like that with the gun metal again. And then you go ahead and clear coat it. Once again, to avoid using, uh, using clear coat outside because God knows what will happen, I have Army Painter Anti-Shine uh, Matte Varnish which works really well and runs right through my airbrush. Um, I want to say I run it about 30 PSI when I'm doing the uh, clear coat. It'll push it right through, no problems. Um, just make sure you don't get any clogs that come out of the nozzle or anything in there. So after that, we have the cockpits. All right, so you'll notice this guy has a shiny, shiny cockpit. And it actually is reflecting light from underneath. 
Um, the way that we pulled that off is we used a Games Workshop technical paint. So there's a Games Workshop put out a line of technical paints for doing um, dual, uh, gem coats or something like that is what they call it. So for that, you first have to put down a me metallic base layer. So now that we're clear coated and everything, because this is a high gloss, uh, high gloss layer we're putting on, we use 71062 Vallejo Model Air Aluminum, which is brushed right on. It's really thin. Um, I, I like using the Vallejo Model Airs as brush on paints because of the simple fact that they are very thin and they do go on really smoothly. So after that, you apply, once it's dry, you apply a thin layer to the area that you've put the, uh, you know, that you've put that on. Focus better? Oh yeah, look at that. So you apply a thin layer to where you put that on of Citadel Technical Soulstone Blue. And if you look at this, it's like an Ard Coat, which if any of you use the, you know, um, if anyone's used the, the Games Workshop paints or familiar with, if you're not, um, it's, it's shiny like an art coat, but it's like a gel. I don't know if that'll focus. See how that comes off in like a blob. And if you apply it to there, which I'm doing through the camera lens, it stays as a blob. And it'll, you can apply it thinly enough to where it'll kind of sink into the recesses on the cockpit, stuff like that. And it dries to a very hard finish. But it's also very, very, very translu uh, transparent, almost. Um, so, like on the on you know on, on him, you can see where it gives him this. Anywhere you put it, you have that you know instead of having to put the dots on there and putting your highlight area, it's always highlighted towards the source of light. So it's almost like having an actual cockpit, you know, cockpit glass. Um, you can also see it pretty well on the catapult where. The it actually sinks down into the recesses on the cockpit windows, and it clings a little bit to the edges of the cockpit windows, giving a little bit of a darker um, appearance. And once again, your highlight on that follows the light source, and of course, the reflection from behind it also follows the light source. So it gives it a very realistic look as far as the cockpit windows, and you know, looking like you have glass that's reflecting um, sunlight back towards the source of light. So that's it for the review of the models themselves. I did go ahead and review the box set, which uh, I'll try to link to in the, in the you know, I have to go back into this because I'm loading it up through my phone, but I'll try to link back to it as soon as I can. Um, you know, if you are buying the box sets just for the miniatures, they are a very good value. Uh, these are very well done, high quality plastic miniatures. Uh, if you buy the Game of Armored Combat box set just for these, and you have someone new getting into the game, remember that this comes with a essentially a full rule book that just doesn't cover the new technology, but it covers all the base rules of the game. So if you have someone new getting into the group, or if you need a group rule book, it does come with that as well, so there's a little bit more value there for you as well. Um, if you want to go ahead and see a review of the actual box sets, I do have those linked below. Um, and... We're going to go ahead and, as soon as I can, cover the Iron Wind Metals deal that comes in the Beginner's Box set. So, until next time, y'all have a great day, great evening, great whatever it is where you are. This is CJ signing off.